Hi, my name is Alex uh, from Tofu Garage in Germany. I'm 27 years old and I own way too many shit boxes. <laughs> Video. Vandaag gaat de video uh, in het Engels zijn, Gees, dus mensen die geen Engels kunnen, I'm sorry, maar zoals je het ziet op de achtergrond, de wagens, we zijn hier bij Tofu Garage in uh, Duitsland. En vandaag is het dus uh, Alex van Tofu Garage, jullie zullen zijn verhaal wel horen, maar dus de video is in het Engels. So yes, meer ga ik ook niet zeggen. Ik zou zeggen, als je het een leuke video vond, laat een blauw duim omhoog achter. En vergeet zeker niet om te abonneren op mijn kanaal. En dat ga ik zeggen zoals altijd. Geniet van de beelden! I think it started when my dad was insane enough to put me in a car with 14 and said I should drive on a racetrack. But yeah, like, like into the whole JDM thing, like really heavily, obviously in, in my kind of age, uh, was Fast and Furious influence. Um, I mean, obviously Hot Wheels cars and that shit. But for me, it really got into like serious car stuff when I was in America. My first car was basically uh, the Super 7. My dad gave it to me, which I learned driving on. Uh, at some point he was like, oh yeah, it's, that's your car. But uh, the first car I, I bought myself was the Audi TT. Um, back then I, I was still kind of damaged. Um, I had the choice between a 350Z and an Audi TT and I chose the Audi TT. So at, at that point I wasn't fully developed yet. So <laughs> I, I did a mistake there, I'm sorry. But yeah, that, that was my, my first, like it was a real shit box. It was like two grand. I just drove it for a summer because I knew I'm, I'm gonna move to the US afterwards. Um, so I didn't really care about the car. Um, I just got it to drive it a few months and then sold it again. Um, and when I got to the US, um, I bought the FRS. It wasn't at all the plan. I wanted a US muscle car kind of thing uh, at first, but then I bought the FRS and uh, started modding it. And yeah, um, I started building that. And then I had it uh, because I had a buddy who had a shop in Miami. I always worked with him on the car because I was a student. So I, I kind of had to do shit myself because I couldn't just afford paying him blindly. Um, but yeah, I started building that and then that was occupied in the shop a lot. So I needed another car to basically get to university. Uh, bought an S13, <laughs> uh, which probably wasn't the best idea of getting a reliable car. But actually back then it was really good and, and didn't break down. But yeah, then I bought the S13 and I started drifting with it in the US. Uh, then I got along, uh, offered an RX-7 FD, which was one of my dream cars. Uh, for a really good price. I paid $7,000 back then for a left-hand drive manual RX-7 uh, with already HKS turbos on it. So it was, it was a really good deal uh, even in, at that time. That went a whole down the rabbit hole shit show um, with that car. But yeah, then I had those three and those three cars I actually brought home with me again after I moved back to Germany. The S13 is actually the blue one, Rocket Bunny in the back now. Just, I sold it to, to one of my buddies now um, but yeah, when I brought it here, I built Rocket Bunny, repainted it. Then it was way too pretty for drifting, so I just kept it as a daily show kind of exhibition vehicle kind of thing. It was it was really slow progress. I I bought one after the other. Um, I bought when my cars were still in the container. I bought an S14 just to get around over here uh, because my cars were not here yet. Um, then. K Mura brought out the Rocket Bunny boss kit for the car and I, was, I fell in love with the, with the looks of it and I bought one and built that car into a boss. So I had to buy another car. Um, then a buddy from Greece sold his Miata with a, a Honda S2000 engine in it. So I bought that, then built that and yeah. It just, it just kind of like stepped along and 
Along the way, I had a lot of S13s, a lot of S chassis, um, a lot of MX-5s, but it's just some cars stuck around. And I mean, NSX obviously is, is one of the most recent ones uh, with the MK4 Supra. It's definitely dream car material. Um, but yeah, I bought the car in a complete different state, completely rebuilt it. So yeah. You never owned a Mark IV? Mark IV Supra? Yeah. That's mine. Oh. <laughs> but I, 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 did, I did break the engine uh, this, this summer, yeah. So, yeah, that's why the 2JZ is sitting on a tire back there. <laughs> yeah, it still needs to go to the machine shop and everything, but yeah, no time. <laughs>
but no one really looks at the NSX, but it was the most advanced one. It had a monocoque chassis, it was all aluminum. Um, it was more track build than any of the other cars, and it's a really pretty car. Yeah, the NSX is, is really dope. The, the MK4 is also icon, but yeah, it's, the, the cars are, that are stuck around over the years are really the cars I really can really get rid of. Like, I've, I've sold a bunch of projects or cars where I was just done with them and really didn't like see any development anymore or like I, I got tired of them or whatever then I, I actually sold them at some point but all the cars that are still here is like I either can't get myself to sell them or they're so much fun when I drive them that they are gonna stick around for that yeah most of them are registered in the summer like the FRS, the NSX, uh, Super and shit they're, they're registered in the summer and when the weather gets too shitty I unregister them um, but there's something like uh, retirement insurance in Germany. Like if you unregister a car, it's still insured for a year. So basically in the winter time when they're not registered, they're still insured. Um, and we have a complete insurance on the shop. So whatever is sitting inside the shop is insured too. So yeah, because for example, drift cars, you obviously can't insure them as a, as a, track, as a road car. Um, same with the cars that are still on Japanese registration or stuff, or collector's cars like the old timers. Um, you don't just register them if they're a first owner car and it actually has value to them to not be registered again and again and again. So yeah, but we just have a good insurance on the whole shop itself. I had like a few few friends, few guys, um, was all the same extreme hobby. So like we all started white bodying our cars and stuff, but we were always the unicorns in a group because we like, there were like the normal guys who like just had like wheels, tires, and some nice suspension, some nice extras, whatever, some performance mods. And then there were like the, the retards who went completely overboard, cut up their cars, went way too much stupid camber and just, just overdid the whole thing. Like you have, you have like a spectrum where like, okay, that's normal tuning. And then you have the, oh, okay, you're a little, a little crazy there. And when I got to Germany, it was really, I, I was the one unicorn because there was no one basically around doing that stuff at that time. Um, so I wanted to, to have like a group of, of where I can like basically collect those people which are a little bit over the top um, because there were like let's say a handful of guys who did like wide body builds or stuff in Germany itself um, and they were all scattered across Germany and um, with me getting my cars built um, since I basically rocket bunny all of my cars uh, I already had like like six or seven of them as my own cars and then people started noticing it and they wanted to come and we had like like ride outs with like 20 cars and they're all white body all crazy and whenever we went to like a show it was like all a bunch of customers or friends coming by with their white body cars and shit yeah and then it all started with Tove Garage and it it got way too big too fast like I was I just planned it as a, like a name rough idea and then it kind of blew up and uh, it was way too fast than me tagging along with it. And then basically we had a complete different company for it, for like hold the, the shop, the parts and whatnot. And Tofu Garage just swallowed everything because no one could like separate it from being a crew than being the shop. So I, at some point I was like, okay, the people chose it. So I just gonna take Tofu Garage as it all. And yeah. Yep. Do you also sell like merch and yeah we have we have merchandise we have caps with have sweaters um obviously stickers and stuff um but we also um are the general importer for rocket bunny uh do distribution for liberty walk um for for clinched for 
uh, KBD, which are like drift body kits, which are really flexible. Um, a bunch of uh, fiberglass companies we represent uh, for like, for example, Skyline GTR conversions or stuff like that. Um, we have a lot of uh, air rides, brakes, suspension mods, exhaust systems and whatnot, yeah. I started doing Instagram just for the fun of it in America already, when it was here still like very untypical to do it. Uh, so I just had the, like say, benefit of starting early. Um, and obviously the cars are to an extreme point where they're obviously shared a lot because they're like very extreme. So you're gonna show people and, and they're like really, like you remember them. Like when you see the FRS around and you see it again, you're like, oh yeah, that's that car because no other basically looks like it. Um, but for me, like to, to hear someone say, oh yeah, he's famous or stuff is like, nah, bro. No, I'm not. I, I might have followers, but that doesn't change it. I'm still the... the guy that works on car and yeah, like, like, if, like for, for me, someone who's famous can live off that fame. Like, for example, someone who's like a full-time influencer, sells, I don't know, fucking tea or whatever they sell, I don't know, um, and can actually make a living off of that. That's for me, let's say someone famous, or if you walk through the city and someone asks you for a picture every three meters, that's for me someone who's famous. I'm an idiot who builds cars and at a car show I might get recognized by someone walking by but that's nothing like special honestly like if you have a dope car you build and you go to a lot of car shows at some point everyone is going to know you are you then famous too it's like nah I know that the name really spread a lot and if you say Tofu Garage a lot of people heard of it which is really cool for me um, but I'm sadly not at the point where I can say, oh yeah, I sell so much merch, I can just chill and just do my cars and shit, yeah. I wish. <laughs>
I, I would love to have daddy's money because that would mean I wouldn't have to work until 3 a.m. anymore in the shop and actually get some sleep or have a private life. I wouldn't mind, honestly. But that's just not how my life dealt my cards. So I gotta f still work for my money. Like, that's how it is. If I win the lottery one day, or oh, fuck it. I won't, I won't do, I do shit until 3 a.m. No, <laughs> I'll pay someone to do it. I don't care, but that's the thing. Like in Germany, people are really, really bad with their mentality. Instead of seeing it as a motivation that at a young age, you can actually make that happen. Or, or if you work hard enough, you can actually buy these things. They get jealous and be like, oh yeah, daddy's money, he's a douche, whatever. People text me like, oh yeah, I'm so jealous. Like, don't be, trust me, don't be. Because I've not done one thing you couldn't do. The only difference is I'm willing to sacrifice time, private life, money. When it comes to like, I, I don't go party, I don't smoke. I, I basically only spend money on my cars and stuff I really need. I've done two jobs for five years. Um, so I had the whole shop business and went on a 10 hour shift. So you can calculate how much I slept during those years. Um, and it actually takes a toll on you. It takes a toll on your body. It really drains you physically. If you're willing to do that, you're able to afford this kind of shit. But if you don't, don't complain. Don't be like, oh yeah, I'm jealous. I want to have all these cars too. No, you don't. Because the life that comes with having these cars, you don't. So as long as you don't want that life, don't be jealous of the cars. Seeing all the pretty cars, seeing me going on ultras, on drift events, whatever, that I spent four nights before the drift event in the garage, fixing the car, getting it somewhat ready because during the day I still did customer cars. No one sees. But that's, I guess that's, that's part of it because you don't, like obviously I don't show it as well. In my stories I do, but in my posts, I, I basically just post pictures of my car. If you want to head over, buy a cap, buy a sweater, highly appreciate it. If you want, like if you need a rock a bunny kit or any type of body kit or whatever, hit me up. If you have questions about JDM cars, want to buy a car, have a problem with your car, whatever, let me know.